Hello. Um, first, we'd like to study the Solow growth model, uh, originally formulated by Robert Solow at MIT. Uh, Solow growth model goes as follows. The output comes from the use of capital and labor. Very reasonable assumption. So, uh, output is a function of capital and labor. Uh, it is assumed that we can divide the both sides of the equation by n, the total labor force, to come up with this, this relation. Output labor ratio is a function of uh, capital labor ratio. Uh, this says that the uh, the uh, each worker works with more capital, like machines and computers, then each worker becomes more productive to produce more output. So output labor ratio becomes higher. This relation can be shown uh, in this diagram, where uh, output labor ratio is measured along the vertical axis, and the capital labor ratio is measured along the horizontal axis. And the relationship will look like this. As uh, capital accumulates more and more per labor force, output labor uh, force tends to increase. Uh, it should look like this, not like this. Well, because of the law of diminishing returns. Uh, which says that for each increase in capital labor ratio, the resultant increase in the output becomes less and less because of law of diminishing returns. I will come back to this point a little later. Uh, in this solo model, we can show that the, uh, there will be a, a stable equilibrium in the following sense. Here's the same diagram measuring output labor force along the vertical axis and capital labor ratio along the horizontal axis. And this blue curve is the relationship between output labor ratio and capital labor ratio. Now, uh, first, we assume that the saving ratio is constant, like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 or something like this. So we multiply the this output labor ratio uh, by the constant to come up with this red curve. Here is fraction S. Therefore, this red curve comes below this blue curve by a constant fraction. This red curve shows the rate of increase in capital stock because investment is financed by savings and investment means increase in capital stock. Whereas the rate of increase in population is shown uh, by the straight line uh, with the rate of increase n, that's the rate of population increase or labor force increase. So uh, when you start out at this low level of capital labor ratio, the rate of increase in capital is greater than the rate of increase in labor force so that the capital labor ratio tends to increase over time. On the other hand, if you start out at this very high level of capital labor ratio, the rate of increase in capital stock is less than the rate of increase in the labor force, so that the capital labor ratio tends to decrease. And they, the path tends to converge to this value, K over N asterisk, that's the stable equilibrium or steady state equilibrium where rate of capital increase is the same as rate of population increase therefore uh, at this point capital stock and labor force will grow at the same constant rate so that's a steady state equilibrium which is stable now uh, using this stable model we can interpret the uh, developing and developed economies. 
uh, as, as this. <coughs> uh, the, again, the same diagram, capital output labor ratio and capital labor ratio. Here is a relationship between the, those two, between those two variables. Um, at this less level of stage, with a very low value of capital labor ratio, not much capital accumulation, then the output labor ratio is very low, very less level, less level of stage. But as the capital accumulation uh, progresses over time, then the output uh, per labor force tends to increase. So this rapidly developing stage. And many of the developing economies are somewhere here. Okay. And then solo model implies that this process will continue uh, to converge into uh, somewhere here, the steady state equilibrium level at the uh, advanced level. So uh, the developing economies will eventually grow into the developed stage. However, in reality, we can see a clear uh, distinction, division between developing economies on one hand and developed economies on the other. And very few economies have been able to uh, break out of uh, developing stage into developed stage. The, uh, the maybe Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong and Singapore along with uh, just a couple of uh, economies have been uh, successful in moving from the developing stage to developed stage but most of the developing economies have been uh, rather stagnant uh, after achieving some middle income level so the there's something go might go on here that the economy may grow into this stage but will face some difficulties to go beyond that to join the uh, developed economies rank. We'll, we'll study those aspects later on in this course. Well, uh, that's about the solo model and you will see more detailed analysis uh, in my lecture note uh, note 02. See you in class.